Hi, I'm Eric Christopher, president of WSC Realty Advisors here in Long Beach. I specialized in the sale and management of apartments here for the last 15 years. And through my travels talking to hundreds upon hundreds of investors, there's always been a curiosity about what's going on with out-of-state apartments. Believe me, that topic has really changed over the last five years, which I'll explain a little bit about. And I also think this topic is very timely right now for a few different reasons, which we'll also cover. Overall, I hope this short video just gets you thinking a little bit. Let's start with a question. Will we as owners experience more of the same or less taxes, fees, tenant rights, and government taking of our property rights moving forward here in California? It's kind of a rhetorical question, but I put it in here to set the table for what we're talking about. The governor just signed a budget in June that has a $54 billion deficit in it. And that's not gonna be made up without raising taxes and lowering government services. Another thing to think about is the massively underfunded public pension fund issue. And that's a whole nother topic to talk about. I attached in the email a YouTube video, which has a Republican Senator here in California named John Morlock from Orange County, a very sharp individual, CPA, knows his numbers. One of the points he made in there was that half of the California state income comes from personal income taxes. But what shocked me was his assertion that half of those taxes were paid by 1% of the wealthiest residents. There's an example in there for a fellow from New Jersey named David Tepper, who's a huge hedge fund manager, makes billions of dollars. He left New Jersey to move to Florida, and he was paying something like two to 3% of the total income tax in New Jersey. The state had to have a special meeting to figure out how they're gonna cover this guy's tax shortage. So what happens when guys like Elon Musk and other Silicon Valley billionaires or people in Hollywood or just general you know, wealthy people leave the state? And that's happening right now. So the cities and the state all need your money. And I want you to answer the question of where you think they're gonna get it from. So as I record this, we still don't know who the president of the country is gonna be moving forward, but we did dodge a few bullets last week in the election. Prop 15 and Prop 21 failed. But just take a look at what's gone on this year around the COVID-19 situation. I mean, all of the packages of relief have been for the tenants. There has been one thing passed for landlords. And I don't think that's anything that's gonna change, okay? So what are you expecting next? I mean, will there be further COVID-19 relief for tenants in 2021? I mean, that's very likely. Uh, I can assume there's gonna be similar ballot initiatives to this based on what we just shared with you about the state's need for money. And remember Prop 10 in 2018, the voters struck it down, but what did Newsom do? He just circled back around and pushed AB 1482 through last year, giving us rent control. I don't think we're gonna see an end to this. So clearly the writing is on the wall. Let's flip the page literally and talk about out-of-state apartments. And we'll do that going from a couple of the mechanics of it down to the end game. Now what I mean by mechanics is you're dealing with more landlord-friendly governments in these states. They don't have rent control. They weren't looking to dial it up a notch in this last election. They have better landlord rights. The evictions are way easier. You don't hear about these nightmares of the person stayed in the unit for months and you had to spend thousands of dollars to get them out. Lesser red tape. Now, concurrently, you have an improving demographic in a lot of these markets, and that equates to a better employment base. Not only do we have friends that are leaving the state, and I've got a few of them right this very minute, but so are companies. So companies are thinking the same way as you would as an apartment owner, same business equation, is too high operating costs, too high taxes, too much government interference. Elon Musk is seriously considering vacating California to move Tesla headquarters to California or from California to Nevada or Texas. Toyota already took off. We're seeing companies taking their high paying jobs into different markets. That benefits you as an apartment owner in one of these markets. We'll get to more of that in a minute. Lastly, you're gonna get more for your money in these markets. Why do I say that? Right now you're going in cap rate in a Long Beach apartment building is 5% maybe. That's an average cap rate of 2020. Obviously nicer neighborhoods are gonna be a little less. The lesser neighborhoods are gonna be a little higher cap rate but it's running right about 5%. In many of these Western region markets, you're looking at a six to 7% entry cap rate without any rental increases. So there's definitely upside to your, your cap rate. 
Now, second part of the equation is better leverage. We're paying such a premium here in California for our units that the lending doesn't allow us to pay less than 65% loan to value, giving us a 35% down payment. But in some of these other markets, you're easily able to get in with 25 to 30% down because they don't have the premium attached to it or the pricing you do here. So the bottom line is you can affect arbitrage by moving across state lines. I'll show you more about that on the next slide. Okay, I'm gonna share with you a couple of the markets that I visited most recently. The first recently was Tucson. I took my son down to go attend the University of Arizona. So I have a feeling I'll be making regular visits down there. And it was a very interesting market. Just real quick on the continuum, if you look at a, a scale of zero to 10, uh, let's look at the zero side being Long Beach with a sub 4% or sub 5% cap rate. If you go to the other end of the spectrum, you're probably talking about a market like Tucson or Albuquerque where you can achieve six to seven plus cap rate. The other markets that I'm talking about will probably fit in the middle of those two bookends. But this is where you find the growth, okay? Tucson is really an interesting market because it's experiencing growth. Um, it's an upstart tech region being compared to Austin, Texas, say 10 years ago. Uh, aerospace is huge there. They've got basically one of the top five largest aerospace regions in the country. Raytheon just radically expanded there. You, know, you can see the difference in jobs and a lot of those are 70, $80,000 plus a year jobs. Then they bring along with them a couple hundred smaller aerospace subcontractors. They have a really good synergy with U of A because they have an engineering department there. Yeah, just jumping down two bullet points. U of A has 44,000 students, 11,000 employees. But one of the best things I saw about this market when I did my study is that the government, whether that be the city or the state, is the largest employer in the region. Those are very safe, secure jobs. Uh, hardly any of them, if any at all, lost their jobs due to COVID. They do make up 20% of the employment base there. So this is a market that's ripe and ready for growth. Um, I put the metrics at the bottom. I've studied these extensively. And this is how I analyze every market. So if you were to call me and say, hey, Eric, what does Denver look like vis-a-vis -vis Tucson? What does Salt Lake City look like vis-a-vis -vis Phoenix? I can tell you that very simply. But as you can see there, pre-COVID, there's, there's great rent growth there. The rents are growing faster than they are here. The vacancy, if you see that number under 5%, uh, that's been improving as well. And the, the average cap rate here is ridiculous. I mean, you're talking six and a half uh, percent entry. So let's just jump to one example, which just sold. I viewed this property when I was there. Uh, very much uh, a high C, low B minus property, about three miles away from the University of Arizona. I don't, I don't say that it's student housing. It didn't appear that way. But this sold to an LA buyer exchanging from uh, a couple of units he's, he had here in LA. Built in 1972, um, the bottom line is there's a rehab done there just a few years ago. The building looks really great, although I could see a few more things you could do to it. But at the end of the day, at 4.2 million, that's a 7.1% cap rate on entry. Uh, the rents looked a little bit low, but uh, not, not too far out. But the, the other good part of the news was the buyer got a 75% loan on that, on that property. There's much more like this. Uh, this offers probably, Tucson offers the most wide range of things you can buy, uh, going from kind of the mild to the wild, very much cookie cutter buildings that look like maybe they're in Anaheim or Buena Park or something, all the way out to something you could buy uh, on the outskirts of town that's an eight and a half cap that has some motorhome parking on it. I mean, really, the sky's the limit in, in Tucson. So very interesting town, which as I mentioned, I'll probably be spending some more time in uh, visiting the sun. Now my more recent trip, vastly different market. Uh, Reno is a really interesting town. And when you think of Reno, you think of Harris Hotel, you think of the downtown market. Let me tell you, that downtown market is probably the least desirable area of the region or say the city of, of uh, Reno Sparks. Uh, that area is right on the launch pad for a couple massive redevelopments. The, ho the hotel, the Harris Hotel has closed and it's going to be converted to luxury multifamily with retail where the casino was. Uh, so the downtown area 
you can just smell it. It's about uh, to explode with the redevelopment. And the interesting part is the previously kind of lesser part of town, which is Midtown, has been completely gentrified. That's where all the cool restaurants and bars are. That's where I kind of hung out on my two nights there when I was there. Uh, just a lot of fun stuff below the Truckee River heading down Virginia from, from downtown. So s s appears to be quite a bit of upside there. Nevada, not many people need to know or already don't know this already, but they're favorable with taxation. There's a ton of startup activity there. Now, if you look at the University of Nevada, Reno, it's about half the size of U of A down in Tucson. Um, another interesting part of this story is outside of town, about 30 minutes, the Reno Tahoe Industrial Center. It's literally the largest industrial park on the planet. And companies like Tesla put their gigafactory there. I tried to get close to it to have a look, but they wouldn't let me through the, the gate. But I could see it off in the distance, and it's literally like the largest building I've ever seen. Uh, Google's developing 1,200 acres there. So there's a, there's, there's a lot of excitement around Reno. It's a very, very good looking submarket. And in that midtown area, there's a ton of apartment buildings. Looks a lot like your, your B grade apartments in Long Beach with you know, uh, people walking around, their dogs. It's a, it's, it's a very exciting story, along with the downtown area being redeveloped. I uh, put my metrics in the bottom there. Good rent growth, very good vacancy. Your cap rate's a little bit lower than Tucson, okay? So in the, like I mentioned, the scale of Long Beach being at the zero and something like Albuquerque, Tucson being on the far end of that, this is going to fall somewhere in the middle, maybe uh, just to the right of the of the 50% line or the, or the, uh, the average, okay? And I do expect that uh, when I show Salt Lake City and a few of the others that they'd be kind of close to that return. Now let's take a look at a really interesting listing I saw when I was there. Obviously, brand new construction. Okay, one of the buildings, there's two of them, two 12 units right next to each other. One was finished and looked like it was ready for sale. It's actually under contract right now and the other's a little bit behind it. But why I wanted to point this out, brand new construction, all two bedrooms. It's in a great part of town right near, which is one of the two remaining really nice casinos, the Peppermill Hotel. If you've been to Reno, you've probably been there. That's down Virginia from downtown in the Midtown area. And you're within walking distance of that, which could be great for employees to live there. But you walk up the street just a short way, there's an old mature lake with a park around it, some beautiful old homes just taken care of really well. It's, it's just a great area. And you can buy that at, a, at close to a six cap brand new construction in an area where there's plenty of people working around uh, and can walk to work, et cetera. And these are just two examples, okay? I looked at 35 to 40 buildings in each market, kind of developed my own story about, okay, this is a C-grade neighborhood, this is a B-grade neighborhood. Uh, both of the, the examples I've shown you are, are B-grade neighborhoods. And I've got a bunch more to show you if anybody's on that curiosity line or pulling the trigger now on something like this. Give me a call and that'll lead me kind of to my last slide of the day and how I can help you. Okay. I've been an apartment broker in Long Beach for 14 years, also managing units. If you're staying here in Long Beach or the surrounding area, great. I'd be a really solid equation for your management. But if what I've been sharing with you today strikes a chord with you or you're already approaching a 1031 exchange or you're going to do that next year, I urge you to give me a call. I can help you. I can give you information about these markets that will help you once you get there. You will have access to more exchange candidates. That's all that matters, right? My relationships with the brokers and managers will definitely get you more opportunities. I mean, hell, go on LoopNet and find some yourself. Do your own shopping. A lot of people do that. But the, the bottom line is I can help you open up more opportunities than maybe you would have seen before. And what I'll also do is I'll help you every step of the way. I may not be the broker representing you in the, in the out-of-state market. I'll be your listing agent here, but I can promise you, I'll go to these markets with you. I'll climb on the airplane. I'll study the, the, the deals that we find. I'll give you my you know, experience of what I've seen and help you achieve what you want to achieve. And lastly, since I do make you know, sort of semi-frequent visits to these, um, I can serve as your, your quasi-asset manager. That meaning, hey, the local manager 
we need to stay up on them. We need to be in front of them. I'll do that on your behalf. The results are always better that way, even though I found some great managers in each of these markets. I'd still like to do you the service of being in front of them on your behalf from time to time. Doesn't really cost you anything. Uh, my regular visits to these markets will definitely help things stay on track. So I urge you to give me a call. Questions, comments, critiques of this video. I'm all ears. I'm always looking to learn and to help people. And this is a very exciting topic. I've really enjoyed studying these other markets and getting to know what they're made of and what the potential is for them. And I'd love to, to have you be the benefactor of that knowledge. So again, thank you for watching the video today. And any way I can help you, please give me a call and we'll talk to you soon.